Recently, I interviewed Richard Clark about his struggle with diabetes, and he shared how he brought his blood sugar down from the 400s to the low 100s. Now, I love to do blood sugar tests, and so I asked Richard if he'd agree to test his blood sugar after two different meals, one totally of fruit and the other of vegetables. Richard agreed, and he seemed eager to see the results of these two different types of meals. He came back for an evening meal of fruit, two big bananas, one large apple, and a mango. He enjoyed the fruit, and then we sat around and talked while we waited to see what the fruit was going to do to his blood sugar. He tested himself at 30 minutes, and then again one hour after the meal was finished. And afterwards, we talked on camera about the results. Well, let's talk about what happened tonight. You came over. We're here in a cottage. I'm doing some uh, ministry, not related to diabetes, but yes. related to Jesus Christ and a church. So uh, you came over tonight, and uh, we talked, and you, we, I gave you a fruit meal. Yes. And uh, what was your blood sugar at the beginning? It was 94. Yeah, which is a good number. Right. So you were in good shape at the beginning. Mm -hmm. You ate. Tell us what you ate. I ate two bananas, an apple, and a mango. Two bananas, an apple, and a mango. A lot of fruit. Yes. And uh, so we tested it at 30 minutes after you finished, mm -hmm. and then at one hour. What was it at 30 minutes? It was 186. 94 to begin with. Yes. Jump to 186. In 30 minutes. So that's like uh, 86 and 6, 92 point rise in 30 wow. minutes time. That's significant. Yes. And then after one hour, what was it? It was 199. 199. Yes. A lot of people would have looked at the fruit you ate and said, boy, he's such a, a good boy. He's doing so good. He's eating <laughs> yes. healthy fruit, all those vegetables, all that vitamin, I mean, all those uh, vitamins, vitamin C, who knows what good minerals are in all that fruit. Yeah. What did you learn from this little experiment? Well, you know, it's funny because I had no idea bananas had that many carbs in them. Okay. Because I typically would eat at least a, a banana yeah. a day. They don't taste quite as sweet as some other fruits. Right, they don't. So and you... and the apple and the mango, I wouldn't even think of those as having high carbs. It would make your sugar go that high. Yeah. But it was a learning experience for me tonight. Yeah. So. so you were at 199 after one hour. You yes. almost tipped the 200 mark. Almost. And fruit was all you ate. Yeah, you started yeah. out good. You jumped up significantly. And uh, we're going to have you back to eat uh, a salad. Okay. And I'm uh, just going to have vegetables, a little meat, a little cheese. And we're going to see, we're going to compare the difference between the fruit meal yep. and the salad meal. And, you know, from our talking, I think you've already got a pretty good idea that things ought to improve. They better. They, <laughs> yes, they should improve. The next evening, Richard had a totally different kind of meal. He ate a salad that I'd purchased for him at Walmart. But to beef it up a little bit, I had him cut up about half a green pepper and mix it in with the salad. Then he tested himself at the one hour mark just to see how the salad with ranch dressing had affected his blood sugar. This time the results were a whole lot better. Whereas with the fruit, his blood sugar had peaked at 199. One hour after eating the salad, his blood sugar had only risen to 116. Afterwards, we talked about the two tests. So, Richard, yesterday when you ate the fruit, mm -hmm. you started at what? 94. 94 and went up to? 199. So that's a, over a 100-point rise oh, with four pieces of fruit. Yeah. Now, you had a salad uh, tonight, mm -hmm. a lot of vegetables, no fruit. Uh, did you get... Did you get full on that salad? I did. Yeah. I, I'm very comfortable, actually. Okay, so so you were, you were not depriving <clears throat> no. yourself. You're you're not going to go home feeling haggard <laughs> and starving and, and really deprived. Not at all. Uh, so instead of a hundred plus rise, you had what kind of a rise this time? Okay, we started at ninety six. Is that correct? Yeah, ninety six. And then we ended up at, at one sixteen. Yeah. So that's... 20 points. 20 points. 20 point rise as opposed to 100 plus points. And you stayed well in the safe range. In other words, uh, at 116, you're not damaging your body. Right. Nothing bad is going on. You're good. So what's the moral of the story? What, what do you learn from that? Well, I think the biggest thing that I've learned that, um, you know, some of these stories you hear about fruit and vegetables being good for you, it can be deceiving. Yeah. And the fruits were actually driving my sugar levels higher than I could even imagine. Yeah. I've never thought of that. I never really checked it after eating fruit. 
because yeah. I used to eat a lot of bananas. <laughs> I learned a lesson through all this, yeah. a really good one. Well, they always use fruit and vegetable in the same sentence. Yes. If you want to be healthy, eat your fruits and your vegetables. vegetables. Yeah. And you know, there's a lot of truth to that, but for the diabetic, it's just not quite as realistic. Uh, not that you can't have fruit, you can. You can have, you know, berries are a fairly low carb fruit, melons aren't too bad. And even the things like bananas and mangoes that you ate wouldn't be bad in moderation. Maybe if you had one and the rest of your meal was almost no carbs, or if you had a half of one, yeah. no big deal. But when you really, what I call, pig out on fruit and just <laughs> really take in too much, it's doing a number. It really and is. Uh, so, uh, is this going to affect the way you eat it all? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, it shed a lot of light on my diet. My, okay. my diet plans. Well, I try to eat right and uh, stay away from things that I know are bad for me. Yeah. But um, now I've gotten more knowledge, which mm -hmm. has given me more power and more incentive yeah. to eat right. Now, one of the things I've thought about that you mentioned yesterday when we talked uh, and did that interview mm -hmm. was that when your blood sugar was just so completely out of control, I mean, it was 400, yeah. a little over 400. And I mean, you, you were just a mess. I was. And you immediately started eating salads, mm -hmm. vegetables, and some chicken. Yes. Richard, you were doing the exact thing you needed to do. You yeah. couldn't have diagnosed the, the need any better than what you did. You did the exact right thing. And I think it's just because of the experience I had with my mother, um, I knew what to do. Yeah. And I think that's one of the biggest downfalls is, um, I had a little brother that was diagnosed with diabetes, and he wasn't—he didn't understand what you know what it was about or what to do. He didn't know what to do. Yeah, and he ended up losing his life over it. Actually, well, he is not alone. Yeah, there have been millions of people that have died from diabetes and its mm -hmm. complications unnecessarily. Yes, because they didn't have the knowledge. Yep. And that's what we're trying to do with these videos and the books I've written, and, and not just me, of course, many people are saying this, but we've got to hear it. And that is, uh, for the diabetic, he simply cannot eat as many carbs as he otherwise could. Right. You know, there are some conditions that force you to change your behavior. Like there are alcoholics that can't drink any alcohol or it'll just set them off. Yep. There are other people that can drink a glass of wine with a meal and it, it's no big deal for them. But if you're an alcoholic, it is a big deal. And so in your case, and in my case, as diabetic or pre-diabetic, uh, we've got to be careful. Yes, we do. But the knowledge will really help us. I want to thank you, Richard, for being a part of this. And uh, I think your, your story, your testimony uh, will be a great blessing to a lot of people. So thanks for agreeing to uh, participate. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Okay. God bless. This was a simple test and the outcome was exactly what I expected and what I've seen in my own body over the years. The plain truth is that as healthy as fruit is and as many vitamins as it typically has, fruit will raise your blood sugar in a way that most vegetables never will. So the question is this, if one meal raises your blood sugar to 200 and the other meal your blood sugar never even gets up to 120, which type of meal might be better to focus on for diabetics and pre-diabetics? In Richard's case, with fruits versus vegetables, it was 116 versus 199. 116 or 199. Now, you may say, yeah, but I'm not about to eat four pieces of fruit at one meal. No, probably not, but in many meals, you may be ingesting all kinds of other sources of carbs, like potatoes, bread, rice, pasta, and so forth. And by adding fruit into the mix, you're bumping up your carbs and your blood sugar levels even more. Now, the goal is not to say, I'm never going to eat fruit again. <laughs> Nothing wrong with a little fruit. But we need to see that fruit can be a fairly significant factor in runaway blood sugar. When you look at a cake or pie or bread or pasta or mashed potatoes, you ought to be saying to yourself, too much of this can really raise my blood sugar. And when you look at fruit, you ought to be saying the exact same thing. I hope that video was helpful and inspirational to you. Remember, if you're changing from a high carb to a low carb diet and you're on medication for diabetes or on insulin, your dosage will probably need to be changed. 
In nearly all cases, you'll need to reduce your medication or your insulin. Always work with a good diabetes doctor who can advise you and test, test, test yourself. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, you can make sure that others see it simply by clicking the thumbs up like icon. When a video gets likes, YouTube ranks it higher in their search engine. So when people search for a related topic, the video is going to show up on page 1 or 2 instead of being buried on page 37 or 55, which nobody will ever see. And also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Then click the little bell next to the subscribed button and click next to the words, send me all notifications. That way you'll be notified by email every time we post a new video. I hope you'll check out our website, spiritofgrace.org. Here you'll find all kinds of spiritual resources, articles, and recordings that will nourish and feed you with the Word of God. And you can click on the Diabetes Resources link, which will take you to a page where you can order DVDs and books which will help you in your quest to overcome runaway blood sugar. Also, we have a link which will take you to a page where you can find wonderful low-carb recipes for all sorts of foods. Well, that's it for now. Hope to see you again soon.